So, Solar Roadways has finally shown that it can generate some electricity, generate some power. And you know this is going to be really impressive because they had about $2 million of the US government to do this and another two or so million from their Solar Freaking Roadways Kickstarter. Technology that replaces all roadways, parking lots, sidewalks, driveways, tarmacs, bike paths, and outdoor recreation surfaces with solar panels. And not just lifeless, boring solar panels, smart microprocessing interlocking hexagonal solar unit. So according to their presentation, each one of these panels will generate 44 watts of power. So 30 or so of them will generate somewhere in the region of a kilowatt of energy. So if you do that for an hour, that's going to be a kilowatt hour. And if you do that for the whole time that the sun is currently up in Sandpoint, which is about 12 hours a day, you would expect somewhere in the region of 15 kilowatt hours per day. Which means this patio sized paved area, which according to Sandpoint Idaho's budget was in there for almost half a million dollars, doesn't even produce enough electricity for an average American household with a typical American household consuming about a thousand kilowatt hours per month. So about uh, 30 kilowatt hours per day. So at best, this solar facility will generate enough power for about half an American household. And that's in the best case scenario, when they're pointing directly at the sun for the whole day. Oh, well, they're not doing that. They're laid flat on the ground. Let's just say that a solar panel that tracks the sun has a 100% efficiency for comparison. Now, if you don't track the sun, you just have a fixed solar panel, then you lose about half of that potential. That is, your solar panel is now operating only at 50% relative efficiency. And if you light flat on the ground, as you would in, say, a road, you're now down to about 30% efficiency by the simple act of geometrically laying these panels down flat on the ground, you are throwing away about 60%, two thirds of their potential power generating capability. So let's compare the optimal power produced to their actual power production. So it turns out there's this website that allows you to see the power generation of various solar facilities in America. So you can actually go to Sandpoint, Idaho, and you click on it and you find solar roadways. There it is, solar roadways. And you can see what its power generation is from day to day. So it's a typical day is about half a kilowatt hour. A good day is about one kilowatt hour of power. And on a bad day, it's about a third of that. So, given that 15 kilowatt hours per day would have been optimal, and their best day is about one kilowatt hour, they're running at about 7% efficiency on a good day. And on a bad day, that drops down to about 3% of optimal for these solar panels. Now, just so you know, a kettle runs at about three kilowatts. So on a good day, this entire facility produces enough electricity to run a kettle for about 20 minutes. And on a bad day, it'll only run a kettle for just over five minutes. That's barely enough time to boil a kettle full of water. So let's compare this to some other facilities in roughly the same area. So after looking around for a bit, I found this facility in Cadwell, Idaho. So same state, a little further south. And this one actually tracks the sun. So there's these pictures of it. And if we take a look at the power generation of this thing, we find that it generates about 25 kilowatt hours on a good day and about three kilowatt hours on a bad day. So this comparable sized solar power facility generates about 10 times as much power as solar roadways. So what's the electricity worth that this thing's generated in money terms? Well, turns out a kilowatt hour is about 12 cents. So this solar roadway is generating about 12 cents of electricity on a good day and about four cents of electricity on a bad day. This is exactly the kind of over the horizon thinking that has brought Idaho's own solar roadways to national and world prominence. Half a million dollars of installation is generating optimally about 12 cents of electricity per day. 
Cool, which means that, optimistically, it'll have paid for itself in about 5 million days, or 10,000 years. If we vote with our money for projects we believe in, we can create a future where our society is driven by new ideas. It need only begin with private driveways and parking lots. Once the ball gets rolling, it'll create a momentum all of its own. Now I know what you're saying. No one could have seen this coming. They had to try it, as Solar Roadways so rightly pointed out in their first response to my busted video, that yes, they, they laughed at Galileo, they laughed at Copernicus. We wonder about people who reflexively dismiss our concept without trying to understand it, or go on public forums and attack us. It helps us to remember that there have always been people against change. For some, it's just too scary. They want to just keep things the same. Perhaps they are the descendants of those who argued that the earth was flat, that we didn't need cars because horses worked just fine, told the Wright brothers that they were out of their minds, and, or insisted that we would never reach the moon. Or perhaps they are the voices of larger entities who now feel threatened by the, by the paradigm shift that is solar roadways. Actually, everyone could have seen this coming. Comparatively, I have a really superficial knowledge of solar power. You know, other than the more sunlight you get, the more power. And it's a simple geometry calculation after that. And just from that alone, it was clear that just putting these solar panels flat on the ground as they would be in a roadway was a really stupid idea. Then another guy, Dave from EEV Blogs, who actually does have his own solar panels. Hi, back in uh, 2013, June to be uh, precise, I had this uh, solar array installed, a uh, three kilowatt uh, solar power system on my home roof here. And a very practical understanding of electronics, did his own independent calculations and came to exactly the same conclusion. We'd also both independently run the numbers on the price of the electricity to run the LEDs to light up this road alone and showed that it would cost much more energy to light the road like this than the road could ever generate. And that's ignoring all the other crazy stuff they claimed for their solar roadways. Has anyone seen this video for solar freaking roadways? Yeah! Yeah! I have seen the future, and it is solar freaking roadways. Yeah! Panels in our streets with sensors that can know if someone's crossing the street ahead of you with lights, so it lights up and says, careful, there's an animal, there's a kid, there's a pedestrian. Parking lots that can change their lines. Heaters in them, so you never have to worry about snow plows anymore. Want to save this planet and make it sustainable for your kids and all future generations of life who can look back and say, hey, at least they invented solar freaking roadways. Please follow the link to Indiegogo.com. Meet Scott and Julie Brusaw, check out their work and get informed. This isn't just donating, it's an investment in a real future. Let's do this. So yeah, now we have some hard numbers for how long their solar panels will have to work to give the return on investment. Now, given that when they first unveiled their solar roadway, half the panels didn't work out of the box, and half of those that remained failed within about a week. I'm not so sure I would put money that this is gonna run for 10,000 years unmaintained. But hey, they say that the solar roadway is gonna be modular for fast maintenance. So I'm Sure, that's true, right? Uh, not so much. It took them about three months to repair their solar uh, roadway. So they had some huge failure rate without a single vehicle ever driving on it. An interesting roadway to be certain. But whatever, they repaired it within three months. And then after they got it working again, it partially failed within about a week or so, then caught fire. But hey, this time, I'm sure it's going to be up for the big 10,000 years unmaintained to make its return on investment. And seeing as we're back here, let's take a look at some of the other claims they make for their solar roadways. That <laughs> it, like uh, concrete and asphalt roads, provides a flat place to walk and drive. <laughs> Actually, no, solar roadways doesn't provide a flat place to walk and drive. You know, workmanship counts. It provides 
parking. Actually, no, it doesn't. No car has ever driven on this uh, road or parked on it for that matter. And it's a good thing too, because if your solar roadway is only generating one kilowatt hour per day and you park a car on it, it'll block out the sun, meaning that it won't even generate a kilowatt hour per day. And then they go on to other things, like it generates energy, unless of course you're parked on it, or it's intelligent. Not really. LED lights for lines and signage. Again, not so much. I mean, even from their blog, you can only just about see these lines from closer on a really cloudy, rainy day. You take a look at, say, uh, I don't know, a more oblique angle, as you would get, say, for instance, in driving. This one is from Google Earth, where you can actually get a street view. <laughs> as you can see, uh, no, the LEDs are not visible will be laid down here so the public can watch how they light up to create lines for roads, parking lots, and more. Or you can just take this one. This is the most recent version of their solar roadway. And even from a very favorable high viewing angle, you can't tell whether the LEDs are on or not when it's sunny. Remains snow and ice free. Well, actually, that's kind of true. Turns out that they put so much power into the LEDs that they actually melt the snow. Naturally, that means they consume much more power than they ever generate, meaning they'll never provide a return on investment. But they can offset that by saying, yeah, but we don't need paint. That's a big saving, you know. Look, let's just say the city of Sandpoint decided that they were going to get a, a one and a half kilowatt solar installation. But rather than actually laying those panels flat on the ground under a dirty roadway, they actually put them on, say, the roof of the toilet or something. So they would spend about $4,000 for an off-the-shelf solar installation like this. Now, it's one and a half kilowatts when it's pointing directly at the sun. Realistically, on average, you're only probably going to get about half of that, and that's only going to be while the sun's up. So you're going to get about three quarter watt hours per hour for 10 hours. An average day, you're going to be looking at something like seven and a half kilowatt hours of energy generated, which is about a dollar's worth of electricity. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> so at a dollar a day, it'll generate about $350 of electricity per year which means that in about 10 years, it'll have generated about $4,000 worth of electricity, which is just about where you get your return for investment. So what they've done is they've taken that exact same acreage of solar array, and then they've laid it flat on the ground where it'll generate a fraction of the energy. And then they've put a load of LEDs in there that will actually consume more than a dollar of electricity per day and put it in an unreliable housing where it'll be subject to all sorts of stresses and strains that you just won't get with a rooftop solar installation. And if it takes 10 years to get your money back with just a solar installation on the roof, how long do you think it's gonna take this facility to get its return on investment, given that it consumes more energy than it produces? Okay, so let's take their own numbers here. Hi, we're Scott and Julie Brusaw, inventors of Solar Roadways. How much does this cost? It's going to cost a lot right now. We're still in prototyping stages. Yep. How much a foot? A square foot right now for pilot projects, we're charging just under $500, but that includes the panels, the power supplies, the microinverters, cabling, and installation. Cool. So they say that one square foot of Solar Roadway will cost about $500. So that means this patch of Solar Roadway here is about 150 square feet, which means that this according to these numbers, was about $75,000. In the meanwhile, a solar installation that costs 20 times less than this would generate almost 10 times as much power. That is, solar roadways are about 200 times as expensive as regular solar power. Or looked at another way, the installation on the left has to work for about 10 years to provide its return on investment. The one on the right has to work for about 2,000 years without maintenance to make its return on investment. And that's ignoring the fact that these solar roadways will actually consume more energy 
than they produce. I talked to Walmart Corporation a few years back, and I talked to their guy who's in charge of North American Power down in Arkansas. So he said the typical superstore is 200,000 square feet, and the parking lot's about four times that. So I crunched some numbers for how much power would a 800,000 square foot parking lot produce. I forget the numbers now, but I called him back and he says, that's like 10 times more power than we use. And let me tell you how this conversation proceeded after that. And he said, oh, that's fantastic. It'll generate about five times as much energy as we use. How much will it cost? And then you looked at the numbers again, and it's about a million square feet at $500 per square foot. So that's half a billion dollars, $500 million just to pave a single Walmart car park. And then some random guy might have just poked his head around the door and said, what, half a billion dollars? Well, with a little bit extra, you could actually send a mission to Pluto. Yep, the New Horizons probe to Pluto only cost about $700 million. Now, <laughs> call me crazy, but I think this might be one of the reasons why the guy from Walmart never called back. Imagine if the pavement you drive on would never ice over, didn't have potholes, the lines light up on their own, and the pavement would generate electricity. A small company from Idaho named Solar Roadways is making an impression on MoDOT. And they, Federal Highway, as well as Solar Roadways, are ready to deploy. And we are the DOT that are working with Federal Highway and Solar Roadways with some Federal Highway research dollars to begin that first public deployment of their technology by a state DOT. So, let's see. On a roadway you can't actually drive on. Solar Roadway. Want a paving service with no actual drainage. Solar Roadway. Want a roadway that can catch fire. Solar Roadway. Want a roadway that can fail. Solar Roadway. Want to trust road construction to people who couldn't even pave a patio. Solar Roadway. Want a roadway whose markings look like a disco floor. Solar Roadway. Want a roadway with no discernible patterns. Solar Roadway. Want a roadway whose markings can't be seen during the day. Oh, Solar roadway. Want a roadway that consumes more energy than it produces. Solar roadway. Want to burn millions of dollars of taxpayers' money on a really pointless project. Solar roadway. So you can get an incredible 10 cents per day off your solar roadway. Seriously, guys, if you'd have just opened up a wishing well in the middle of town, you would have made more money off it. Because, hey, they laughed at Galileo. They laughed at Copernicus. So anyone who laughs at Bozo the Clown must be afraid of change. Yeah, I mean, I took so much flack when I first put up the Solar Roadways video about how I just needed to give them a chance. Nah, these people don't even understand the basics of solar power, let alone roadway construction. They just made a gazillion unfounded promises and got $2 million for it. The sad thing is that solar is actually quite good in the right venue. In fact, solar is bloody fantastic in the right venue. But the right venue is not laid flat under the bloody road. And if you want to support scientifically literate media like this, you can do it directly through Patreon. And I'd be very grateful to have your support.